So a couple of years ago, we took a family vacation out to Bermuda, and I read before I went there that you have to try fish chowder while you're on the island. So of course I gave it a try, and I really liked it. Um, it is served with a sherry pepper sauce. It's quite different than most chowders that I've had because it has a little bit of warm spices in it too. So it was pretty good, and so I thought I would try out the recipe with some of my garden ingredients here at home and so I'm using a variety of different types of potatoes which I harvested earlier in the summer and then my new favorite cooking tomato is called an ox heart so I am going to use just a variety of different tomatoes I had some San Marzanas also growing in the garden which I probably will not grow again only because they're a little bit more difficult to work with and I was just really blessed with some beautiful tomatoes this year. Just had them growing out my ears. I had so many tomatoes. I was just very, very blessed. And then I also needed some carrots for the chowder. So I harvested about four carrots. Um, now I'm going to leave a link to a recipe below this video. Um, I'm changing up a few things. I'm using some red bell peppers instead of green. I think the original recipe has green bell peppers in it. Um, so anyway, you can refer to that if you would like to also give this recipe a try. I'm also using some parsley and then I had some more red bells growing in the container garden. Um, I, of course, will need some bay leaves because that really just makes, I think, seafood dishes really stand out and delicious. And then some thyme. And I don't recall the chowder being very spicy in Bermuda, but I am going to put a couple of serrano peppers in here to make it a bit spicy. So we'll start by making fish stock. And in my stock pot, I added some water along with a tablespoon of salt and now two whole rainbow trout, which is what we have here in my area. Just use whatever local fish you have. It certainly doesn't even have to be a whole fish, but I do think it makes a better stock. And then some herbs such as thyme, bay leaves, some peppercorn, and some olive spice berries and now I'll go ahead and put that on the stove bring it to a boil and let it simmer while I get everything else ready now this is the ox heart tomato I was telling you about they are really meaty heavy tomatoes I just really love these tomatoes they're very low seed and just perfect for making um, sauces or soups so I am going to definitely be growing this a lot more next year I saved a few seeds so that I can do that and then my San Marzano tomatoes I'm using a few of those also just cut off the top and give a little X there on the bottom because I'm going to roast these to give them a little bit more depth of flavor and a few cloves of garlic as well these are in the skin still but we'll just drizzle everything with a little bit of olive oil and then I'll just roast these in my toaster oven. So I put them on about 400 degrees in my toaster oven and then I broiled them to get that skin nice and charred. So here are my other ingredients. I'll just prep these real quick. Uh, these are the little quadrato um, red bell peppers. Just really, really nice peppers. I love how red they are when they're grown fresh in your garden. We want to dice everything very small. That's one of the things I remember about this chowder. And so now our tomatoes are ready and so we'll just take those skins off and I can put these off to the side and of course you can always just buy your canned tomatoes um, but this is a great way to use them if you have a lot that you're growing in your garden and then just remove that skin from the garlic and we'll just put all this in a little bowl and we'll just make sure we get out all the goodness just in a strainer go ahead and push that out into your little bowl and I put this in my blender and pureed it so that I can add it to the soup a little bit later and now um, remember my fish stock is still on the stove and so we'll just melt a little bit of butter and in go the onions celery and the bell pepper along with my hot chili peppers too and I'm just going to cook those on low while I prep the fish now my fish is done it's been cooking about an hour and now I'll just remove the skin and bones and 
so I have some nice flaky fish here and then strain out the stock and my peppers and onions and celery are looking great so now I just want to thicken it up a little bit with some tomato paste about a tablespoon of tomato paste another pat or two of butter and then slowly add the flour and now slowly add the stock so I just want to cook this on about medium low until it thickens up real nice so it will be a nice base for the soup. And so I just let the flavors concentrate for about 20 to 30 minutes and now into my pot here where I'll put the soup together. Just adding a little bit more stock. I don't want it to be too loose, so I want to make sure I have a nice thick chowder. And in goes the pureed tomatoes that I made a little bit earlier. And we'll give this a quick stir and slowly add the stock. And in goes some Worcestershire sauce, along with a good couple of pinches of salt and the fish. And what we want to do is let that fish just fall apart and simmer on the stove. I'm also adding a little bit of black pepper and white pepper. And now while that's simmering on the stove, I'll just chop up the potatoes and the carrots. And again, we want to go really small. I actually had these a little bit too big, believe it or not. The chowder that I had in Bermuda, the potatoes were just so, so tiny. I think that's what made it really nice. So take your time. Make sure your knife is sharp. Um, I am always sharpening my knives when I'm working with potatoes and carrots because if your knife is dull, you are much more likely to cut yourself. So I'll leave a link below the video to this little sharpener. I just really like it. And so in goes the carrots and the potatoes. And we just want to bring this to a slight boil and then reduce it to a simmer. Go ahead and make sure that you are tasting it for seasoning. Mine was way under seasoned. So in go a couple of other pinches of salt at this time. And I recall the chowder had a little bit more of a warm spice flavor, so I added a pinch or two of cloves to it. I already had the allspice, but that really didn't infuse it, the stock quite enough. And then just skim off any foam that might accumulate on the surface of the fish chowder. And we'll just cover it and let it simmer until everything is done. Um, I also wanted to add a little bit more Worcestershire sauce. So I guess I added about two tablespoons total. So just cook that until those potatoes are nice and tender and the carrots as well. Then add your parsley and then just finish it off with the juice of about half a lemon. And we'll just stir all this in. And now I also like to freeze this. I don't normally freeze soups that have potatoes in them, but this actually turned out pretty good frozen. And of course you have to have a couple of bowls while it's fresh. And there you go. So it's not completely done here without a little bit more fish right there in the center. That's how they served it to me when I was in Bermuda. So just put you a little bit more flaked fish there on top. And then you have to have this little sherry pepper sauce. Now this is a rum and sherry pepper sauce here. This is one of their variations, but you could use just the sherry pepper sauce if you wanted to. And you can get that on Amazon as well. So give yourself a good sprinkle of that on top. That's really what makes this Bermuda fish chowder. So um, it was really delicious, a little bit more spicy than I had hoped for. I put two serrano peppers in here. I really should have just probably put one jalapeno pepper. <laughs> but at any rate, it was delicious, and I do hope that you can give it a try soon. Thank you so much for watching, and y'all have a beautiful day.